As we move into talking about radical reactions and mechanisms, I think it's important to get a general idea of the types of elementary steps that we'll see in radical mechanisms. They're fundamentally different in many ways from the elementary steps we see in ionic mechanisms. And there are six common elementary steps that involve radicals as reactants or products. There's homolytic cleavage, which we've already seen, radical addition to a pi bond, hydrogen abstraction, which is kind of like radical addition to an RH bond. So I abbreviate it as ARH, abstraction of an RH hydrogen. There's halogen abstraction, abstraction of an RX halogen, X, very similar to hydrogen abstraction, just a different atom type. There's elimination, which is the reverse of radical addition to a pi bond, eliminating a ra radical and creating a pi bond. And then there's radical, radical coupling, or R plus R, which is a very, very rapid step that establishes a new single bond from two radicals colliding. These elementary steps are, are building blocks and radical mechanisms. And just as in ionic mechanisms, we had the six to 10 or so elementary steps that are allowed moves in ionic mechanisms. These are the allowed moves in radical mechanisms. Every radical mechanism is made up of a sequence of these six steps. To get familiar with these, let's take a look at these elementary steps add fishhook curved arrows to show what's going on in terms of electron movements and label them into one of those six categories. So in the first reaction, the thing I notice is that this OO bond is broken between the two sort of carboxyl fragments and we end up with a new radical on this oxygen, in fact, two of them. So what's happening here is cleavage of the OO bond with one electron in the bond going to each oxygen. That's homolytic cleavage, D sub R as I call it, radical dissociation if you like. In the second case, we have a CH2 here in the starting uh, cyclohexene and a bromine atom or bromine radical, we could call it. And in the products, that bromine atom has formed a bond to hydrogen and we have a new radical right here. And there's only one H now at this carbon that was a CH2 in the reactant. So an H atom, not an H plus, but an H atom has moved from this compound to the bromine atom. So this is a hydrogen abstraction step. And we show this using fishhook arrows, using one electron in the bromine, the unpaired electron, as one electron in the new HBr bond, and a CH bonding electron as the other electron in the HBr bond with that sort of loose or remaining electron in the CH bond headed into a new radical here. So notice that what's happening here is the transfer of a hydrogen atom from the cyclohexene to the bromine, making HBr and this allylic radical. And this is what we call hydrogen abstraction. The bromine atom is abstracting a hydrogen from the cyclohexene. Not a proton transfer, not a hydride transfer, but a hydrogen abstraction. In fact, something very similar is happening in the third example here. It's just we start with HBr and we're generating a bromine radical. So this is kind of like the reverse of the step above with a carbon radical abstracting an H from HBr. So we make a new CH bond and we break the HBr bond and using fishhook arrows, we do something like this. The new CH bond is made from the radical electron and one of the HBr bonding electrons. The other HBr bonding electron heads off to bromine to create bromine radical or a neutral bromine atom. However you like to think about it, this is just hydrogen abstraction again. The first radical reaction we're going to look at is the halogenation of alkanes. Yes, you heard that right, alkanes. Saturated hydrocarbons can be halogenated using halogens in the presence of light or heat, which generates radicals, and typically we use light here. The prototypical reaction is the reaction between methane, pretty much the simplest hydrocarbon, and chlorine in the presence of ultraviolet light, which with, uh, creates the radicals. And if we look at the products here, we've made methyl chloride. So notice one of the H's has been replaced with a chlorine and the byproduct is HCl. So it's kind of like chlorine and H have changed places in this reaction. Now the mechanism is very interesting. The mechanism does involve radicals. Experimental evidence points in this direction. We can detect unpaired electrons in the reaction mixture with EPR. We can look at the kinetics. We can look at solvent effects. All signs point to a radical mechanism. But it's not a simple step one, step two, step three mechanism. 
in the case of radicals because radicals are highly, highly unstable with that unpaired electron. So there's a very, very small concentration of radicals in the reaction mixture at any given time. And the reaction involves what's called a radical chain mechanism with three stages or phases. This is kind of the only mechanistic type I'm aware of where we have actually different phases or stages of the mechanism and it's useful to think of these different stages in, in different terms. The first stage is called initiation and this is where radicals are generated. Radicals are typically generated via homolytic cleavage of some even electron species that we call the initiator. In the chlorination of methane, Cl2 is its own initiator, believe it or not. Homolytic cleavage of the chlorine bond generates chlorine radicals that go right into the next phase which is known as propagation. In the propagation stage, we actually generate the products, but we also have to generate a new radical at the end of the propagation phase. For radical chlorination, propagation involves two elementary steps. First, abstraction of a hydrogen from the hydrocarbon by the chlorine atom. We actually saw this step on the last slide using a bromine instead. This generates a carbon radical and the HCl product HCl is done reacting and it goes off and hangs out, but that carbon radical is now highly reactive and can abstract a hydrogen from a Cl2 molecule to make methyl chloride and a new chlorine radical. And this turnover or regeneration of the chlorine radical is critical in propagation. Chlorine is what's called the propagating radical in this reaction. It's continuously regenerated from Cl2 via this halogen abstraction step at the end of propagation. And so now this chlorine radical can find another molecule of methane and do another iteration of the cycle, and this goes over and over and over again. But this isn't quite catalysis, right? Because we're generating the chlorine radical anew from a different Cl2 molecule with each iteration of the propagation steps. And so it's not the same chlorine radical reacting over and over and over and over and over again as it would in a catalytic mechanism. It's new chlorine radicals generated with each instance of propagation. And we can think of this as radical transfer. We're moving radical character from one chlorine atom to a different chlorine atom and at the same time generating the products, generating the HCl and the methyl chloride. Now, in theory, right, if we just think about initiation and propagation, if you think about this carefully, it would only take one instance, one single molecule of Cl2 cleaving homolytically like this to generate one Cl radical, and then that Cl radical is continuously generating new Cl radicals, and so it seems like we need a very, very, very small amount of initiation to get this radical reaction to go. However, there's a problem here, and the problem is what's called termination. Termination steps are these radical-radical couplings that don't generate new radicals and, in fact, consume or destroy radicals in the reaction mixture. It's because of termination that we need to use more than just one molecule of initiator. We can still use it in substoichiometric quantities, but we need to use a, a good bit of initiator to get radical reactions to go. And termination steps are always radical-radical couplings, and they're always extremely rapid. And so we have, to, we have to kind of watch out for this in a practical sense with radical reactions. But things like the two methyl radicals, if they bump into each other, they will immediately couple and make ethane, which is undesirable, if we want uh, methyl chloride out of the reaction mixture. Even though the coupling of methyl radical and a chlorine atom creates methyl chloride, this is still a termination step since we're not generating new chlorine radical. This is, you know, not turning over propagation or, or not propagating the chain, as we might say. And then the coupling of two chlorine radicals to go back to a Cl2, which is the reverse of the initiation step, is also a termination event. This can lead, for example, to a need for a high concentration of photons or, or high intensity of light to get this reaction to go at an appreciable rate. So these are the three steps, uh, the three phases, rather, of a typical radical chain mechanism. Where the business really occurs is in propagation, but the initiation step is critical to generate that first radical.
Propagation, we generate the products, and termination occurs when radicals bump into each other and is an, and is an important factor to consider because it affects the kinetics of, of the mechanism. If these radicals are used up and we decrease their effective concentration without regenerating new radicals, that's going to shut the reaction down early and that's important to avoid in practice. This chlorination of methane is a pretty cool reaction, right, in that it takes a completely unfunctionalized starting material, methane, and converts it into something that we can now use in reactions. I got a good electrophile right there at that carbon, um, and so I can use it in SN2 reactions and all that fun stuff. This reaction tends to like to occur, uh, and so we often use an excess of the hydrocarbon to prevent the addition of multiple chlorine atoms. Using a slight excess of methane means we can stop the reaction at the monochlorination stage. But chlorination in general is not very useful, actually, for hydrocarbons more complicated than methane with different types of CH bonds due to low selectivity. We'll actually explain that in the very near future. Instead, more often than not, we use bromination, which is much, much more selective. It's slower, but it's much more selective, and that's synthetically advantageous. So for higher alkanes than methane, we're going to use Br2 and light rather than Cl2 and light for halogenation of alkanes. Still radical conditions, but uses bromine rather than uh, chlorine.